Some bodybuilders like doing a full set of repetitions with one leg, then repeating the exercise with the other leg. Others prefer alternating first one leg and then the other throughout the set. Either way works fine. It's mostly a matter of individual preference. You can do lunges holding a barbell across your shoulders or holding two dumbbells by your side, whichever you prefer. But what makes the biggest difference in how lunges affect your muscles is how long a step you take. The shorter the step, the more you isolate the quadriceps, as with a leg extension. The longer the step, the more you bring the back of the leg into play, the glutes and the hamstrings. The hamstrings are a two-headed muscle, which is located in the back of the leg and inserts below the knee. The main function of the hamstrings are to curl the leg. The biceps femoris is a two-headed muscle situated on the posterior and lateral aspect of the thigh. It flexes the leg and rotates it laterally. The gluteal muscles, which form the buttocks, adduct, rotate, and extend the thigh. The hack squat is a leg press that emphasizes the lower range of motion, and it's one of the most important mass and strength builders for the hamstrings or leg biceps. The lower you go in a leg press type movement, the more the back of the leg is brought into play. So with hack squats, it's important to lower your body and bend your legs as much as possible so your rear end comes down and almost sits right on your heels. Of course, when your knees are bent to this degree, they are put under considerable stress, so it's important to use a light enough weight in this exercise so that you avoid undue wear and tear on the knee joints. To further protect the knees, keep the exercise as steady and controlled as possible. Come to the bottom of the movement, pause, don't bounce, then straighten the legs and press back upward with a smooth, controlled motion. Your feet should be positioned far enough forward with your weight on your heels rather than on your toes so that the quadriceps are further taken out of the exercise and the stress of the movement is targeted as much as possible on the hamstrings. Incidentally, you can lock your legs out at the top of the exercise, but it really isn't essential. At that point, your quadriceps are doing all the work and the hamstrings really aren't involved anymore. One series of muscles that tends to cramp up quite a bit is the back of the leg, the bicep femoris and the hamstrings. Because what happens is somebody is doing a lot of leg curls, really trying to build up that muscle group, and they don't stretch or relax the muscle at the end or termination of the exercise. They sit down and all of a sudden that muscle cramps up and they end up with a nice ball on the back of their leg. Very painful and will be very quick to put somebody on the floor. The leg curl is a very effective one joint isolation exercise for the leg biceps. A primary function of the hamstrings is to curl the leg and that's exactly what you do with the leg curl exercise. Since this is an isolation rather than a power exercise, concentrate on smooth continuous repetitions and strict technique rather than trying to lift heavy weight. At the top of the movement, try to achieve the maximum peak contraction of the hamstring muscles and then lower the weight again, resisting all the way and keeping it under total control all the way to full extension. A 
Again, go for the burn, doing leg curls. The sensation that accompanies lactic acid buildup after a hard set, rather than trying to overpower the exercise. For further isolation and intensity, try doing leg curls one leg at a time on the appropriate type of machine, performing a full set of curls with one leg and then switching to the other leg and doing another full set without stopping to rest in between. In the old days, they used to have these flat benches and as you would flex or bend your legs towards you, your pelvis would tend to jump off of the top of the bench. And instead of training your back of your legs, you are now putting tension on your low back. Now they built banks or a bend into these machines to keep your pelvis flush on the bench itself. So now the concentrated effort is going on the bicep femoris and the hamstrings, the back of your legs, versus being transferred to your low back. Stiff leg deadlifts are an often misunderstood exercise. They are designed to work your hamstrings and glutes, not the lower back. So for best results, use a moderately lightweight and keep your legs locked out straight. Bend slowly forward and lower the weight as far as possible, feeling the hamstrings stretching to the maximum. Pause at the bottom, feel the stretch, then come slowly back up. Not to a full standing position, but only until you feel the hamstrings begin to relax. You can do stiff leg deadlifts using a barbell, or you can hold on to a pair of dumbbells. In either case, you'll need to stand on a box or a bench so that you can bend forward as far as possible without having the weight hit the floor and limit your range of motion. Again, the key to this exercise is strictness, control, and good form. Keep it strict, and you'll keep it safe. You should consider wearing a weight belt when you're doing stiff leg deadlifts to take some of the pressure off the low back and stabilize it. The glutes are involved in the movement of the thigh as well as keeping the body in an upright position. In terms of bodybuilding, it's best explained by example. Take a hold of something for support. Then squat all the way down to the ground, keeping your feet in a flat position. When your rear end is almost touching the floor, pause. Then, when you first begin to stand up, that very first movement, that's a direct action of the gluteus maximus. The glutes are involved in a wide variety of different leg exercises. When you do squats or leg presses, you're working your glutes. When you do hack squats or long stride lunges, they come even more into play. However, you'll frequently see individuals in gyms, a majority of them usually women, doing various kinds of leg exercises with pulleys and cables and using exotic looking machines in an effort to firm and tone their glutes. But these exercises are far less effective than the ones we've already illustrated, especially deep hack squats where your rear end comes down and just about sits on your heels or touches the floor. Remember, when you're doing a squat, leg press, or hack squat movement, the quads do most of the work in the upper range of motion, down to the point where your knee is bent at about 90 degrees. As you go lower, the hamstrings take over and bear the brunt of the effort, but it's the lowest part of the range of motion where your knees are bent to the maximum and pressed right up against your chest that the glutes are called upon to do the majority of the work. Leg routine number one. Barbell squats. Four sets of eight to 10 reps. Incline leg press. Four sets of 10 reps. Hack.
Hack Squads. Four sets of 10 to 12 reps. Leg extensions. Four sets of 10 to 12 reps. Leg curls. Four sets of 10 to 12 reps. For me, I do need to put more effort into my legs than other parts of my body. I get real lean in my upper body, where my lower body is just a little bit slower. It just likes to hold the muscle and the, uh, maybe a little bit more fat compared to the other ratios in my body. If I'm training my legs twice a week, I'll train them heavy the first time and then light the second time. This way I'm able to maintain the size that I have but shape what I have and, and make it more prettier. Uh, so the first day I would do my bulk exercises, which are the squat and the leg press. And on my lighter days, I would do my shape exercises like my leg extensions and lunges. Leg routine number two. Smith machine squats. Four sets of 10 reps. Machine leg press. Four sets of 10 reps. Lunges. Four sets of 12 to 15 reps each leg. One leg curls. Four sets of 10 to 12 reps each leg. Stiff leg deadlifts. Four sets of 10 reps. In the beginning, back in 1986, uh, Rich Gaspari came out with these impressive cut glutes that nobody else had. Now that's commonplace. People around the world, amateurs and professionals, are now getting these striated glutes. Uh, Renel jean Vier and Andreas Muncher, it's very impressive if you have it. When I'm trying to gain more size, I, I will cut my workouts down. So if I'm concentrating on size, I'll train my legs once a week. Whereas if I'm pre-contest, say, or if I'm trying to put more shape into the legs, then I'll train them twice a week. When you start training, it's very important to train the legs from the beginning because if the upper body gets more developed and the legs get behind it, it's very hard to catch up. And that's why I train the legs from the beginning and, and keep the body parts equal in shape from the beginning. 